do you know what original Tommy's is? Well, they have this thing called Google. Look it up. Anyways, they've been around since 1946, where Tommy Kulax, a Greek immigrant, decided that uh, all the uh, soldiers uh, after, uh, you know, uh, Napoleon defeated the... Um, the Argonauts over there in uh, the the Asia land or whatever. I, I it was World War Two or three. I don't know which one it was. We don't care about history anymore. So, um, anyways, this was started in L.A. This is the true Southern California heritage of the hamburger. And I've, as I've said before, if you saw my Burger One Hundred One thing, this is original Tommy's. This this started so much. The chili there is legendary. It is this thick gravy-like chili. It's uh, ground beef, 100%. It's uh, pretty standard ingredients in there. Super easy to make. I'm gonna show you how to do everything, but this is so friggin' delicious. You can't believe it. And uh, if I don't stop talking, then you're not gonna get to watch the video. So let's get started. Original Tommy's uh, hamburgers uh, started in 1946 and they started with this chili and they've been making this ever since because it's some pretty damn fine chili. It's not a typical chili. Uh, it is a no bean chili uh, and it is in the Texas red style, but uh, you know, it's a little thinner and the meat is very, very fine. So you get a uh, much more gravy like uh, consistency. Uh, that's fine. It goes great on uh, burgers. It goes great on dogs. It goes great on fries, as you shall see. But uh, we're going to make it. What the hell is this doing here? We're not making salad. It takes a carrot. I don't know why. It just does. So you need to mince it up super, super fine into like dust. That's where this comes in. We're using the food processor. We're gonna use it twice because the meat is very, very fine. So I'm actually gonna put the ground beef in here and chop that up fine, kind of like I do with the uh, Taco Bell and uh, Jack in the Box stuff and those other sorts of things. So when, once we do that, then we're gonna have Tommy's chili. Uh, but what else does it need? You need all your seasonings right here. This is basically all of them. Uh, the recipe is in the description below. Uh, just hit the show more tag under the title down there and you'll see everything that's in that. What's in here? This is the flour and the masa harina. Masa harina is corn flour. It's not wheat flour. Uh, it's not, <laughs> it's not corn meal. It is masa harina. There is no substitute for that other than masa harina. You need it, go get some. That's all I can tell you. If you want to make this, you're going to need the masa harina. So, Get that, and uh, then you can make this. Uh, two cups of beef stock, a, a tablespoon of white distilled vinegar, and a pound of uh, ground beef. We'll need that in a minute. But first, we chop carrots. So we're just gonna break this up a little bit because otherwise, it's kind of like putting uh, a brick in a dryer or a washing machine. No work is so good. So one large carrot is all this takes. There you go, and whew, that's energetic. So you want to let this go until it stops breaking down any finer. That's a while. Okay, now you got bits up the side that are not going down, so let me grab the, uh, which I should have grabbed first. I never plan ahead. I'm back with the... Okay, just uh, knock these sides down a little bit. Get this down in here, because you want this, again, really, really fine. You don't want chunks of carrots in your chili. It's not unusual to have carrots in chili. Um, I mean, it's not part of the competition rules if you're making Texas Red, but at least it doesn't have beans in it. What do they call uh, chili in Texas that has beans in it? Salad. Think we're done. We got it. That's all we're gonna get out of it. And you can probably see here, that's pretty fine. That'll work. Perfect. 
All right, so I'm gonna get this out of here and get it in the pan real fast and get this started. And then I'm gonna come back here in half a second and show you what we're gonna do with the meat. So the thing about Tommy's chili is the uh, original Tommy's chili, sorry. Not the, to be confused with the other Tommy's. I don't know that there is one. There must have been, otherwise it wouldn't have the name. <sighs> You'd think I'd do the research on that. Don't care. So um, the uh, thing about their chili is it is very, very fine. Uh, that makes it great for putting on burgers and dogs and, and uh, fries, as I said earlier. Not so easy to get meat that is that fine. You can, uh, if you're grinding your own meat, just use the uh, smallest setting, the finest setting. If you're going to the butcher and getting uh, meat done, you know, say hi to uh, Alice and the Brady Bunch, because <laughs> who's doing that these days? That, uh, yeah, we don't have butchers anymore. Anyways, we have a guy behind the meat counter. That's it. All right, this meat is a medium burger grind. This ain't going to work. You can break it down as much as you want. It still isn't gonna work. So, we just put it in our food processor for a second. You can do this before or after you cook it. This is easier, because I already have this and it's dirty, so. I'm gonna use this. Let me uh, break this down a little bit more. I got a little ambitious, woo hoo Got a little ambitious thinking I could do that in two little bits. That's just going to make goo. We don't want goo. We want fine bits of meat. So break it up more before you put it in there. There you go. Now you know. <laughs> That's my whole purpose of this channel is just don't do what I do. All right, we're going to pulse this. Smash this around a bit again. Get this uh, broken down a little bit better. There you go. This is a lot easier if you do it after it's cooked, but because it's chili, we're saving the grease with it. Oh, we're saving the grease because the grease is gonna make the roux with the flour with the beef stock for the whole thing. So we're not gonna be draining this, so we're not gonna have the opportunity to pull this back out of the pan. It's an all one shot deal. Otherwise, I would say do this after you cook it. It's much easier. That's funny. That works. All right. Now let's get our big pot and uh, go over that real fast. Because that's another thing. You've, you've made chili before. You know how to use a big pot. But if you haven't, I'll show you this. The vessel of choice for cooking uh, this chili is going to be our enameled cast iron Dutch oven. Uh, we're going to put our meat in that sucker and get the carrots in there and start breaking this up and start brining it. The reason you want to use a pan like this is because it has heft to it. It really, uh, you know, kind of uh, normalizes things and, and equalizes stuff as you go. Uh, we're going to add our spices to this. This is our chili spices and stuff, not the flour yet. The reason we do this is to toast the spices. This adds a level of depth of flavor that you cannot duplicate any other way. This is when you add your spices while the meat is cooking, while it's still basically dry. Uh, it is the perfect time, and if you do it that way, you're going to get really, really great chili. Now, it is broken up pretty good, and you can see it's well mashed. It is time to start adding our thickeners to this. We're at that point here. So we're going to add half of our flour masa harina mix. Uh, the reason we do it in batches is because we don't want it to clump too much. We want to be able to get it incorporated with the meat and cook it in. Uh, the flour has to be cooked, basically, before you put the... Um, the stock in here and just make sure there's no white lumps or anything else and you want to cook this off maybe a, a minute minute and a half something like that this really is just a basic step uh you know to to build our roux essentially with all the grease now i'm slowly adding the the stock this thing spent up at a three times the normal speed so it took me you know 20 seconds to add that you don't want to shock the pan basically with cold stuff we add our vinegar to that Again, the whole recipe, everything is in the description down below, so check that. But yeah, just get this well incorporated, and then we're going to let this sit and simmer for 20 minutes on the burner. We're going to put a lid on it and come back, and our chili will be done. That is how fast it is to make Tommy's chili. Uh, it takes six minutes of cooking time. That's how long it took me. Plus, uh, it sits and simmers for about 20 minutes and finishes. That's pretty easy. Half an hour, you're going to have chili. And this 
is chili. That's Original Tommy's chili right there. Tell me that isn't it. Come on, if you've had Original Tommy's, you know this stuff just looks like gravy. Kind of smells like gravy. I do have to give it a taste test. I haven't tasted this yet, so let's find out exactly. That's scorching hot, so be careful. Oh crap. Yep, that's the original Tommy's chili. <laughs> Maybe a little of the spicier side. This is pretty mellow. But uh, that is delicious, it's amazing. Now here's the bad part. This has to go in your fridge for 24 hours. Can't serve it like this. There's something, I mean, it's, it tastes, it has the flavor and all that, but it has to come together, finish coming together. All this, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this in a vessel and we are going to put this in the fridge. I have a lid for it, we're gonna cover it. We're gonna put it in the fridge, it's gonna sit overnight. And uh, for you, that's about 30 seconds. For me, it's, it's an eternity, because I have to wait. But when we come back, we'll finish up our uh, Tommy's meals. Are you excited? I'm excited. All right, cool. I'm gonna finish this up, get it in the fridge, and see you back here in now. The first item we're gonna be making is a chili cheese fries. So we need fries for that. We're gonna shallow fry these in a pan with some oil. Uh, it's about 375, we're just gonna cook these a few minutes. It takes about five, seven minutes until they get really, really crispy, really, really yummy, and uh, just put those in your dish and move on. So making the chili cheese fries couldn't really be much easier. You got fries, you saw me fry those up real nice. They are crispy and hot and delicious. Now there's a three or four, uh, anyways, I'll show you. You have to put down chili first. Oh yeah, there's chili on your chili cheese fries. Mm-hmm, yep, yeah, that's happening. Oh, I'm making two things chili cheese fries because I ain't sharing, are you kidding me? No, okay, so there's that. Now, this gets a slice of cheese across it and you gotta make it pretty, like it's gotta be the right diagonal thing and the whole deal. Now, more chili. Of course, steaming hot chili. Because it wouldn't be chili cheese fries without chili and some cheese. Okay, and here we go. Chili, cheese fries. And I'm gonna go with a little bit more on this one. There we go. <laughs> chili cheese fries. Anybody's eating it, Tommy's nose. Everything's covered in onions. So with the chili cheese fries. That is the Tommy's chili cheese fries. Yeah, there's a lot of other stuff here going on because we're doing the rest of it. But this is your chili cheese fries. Look at how amazing that is, incredible. I can't wait to dig into that. But we have a lot more still to do. That's uh, how we're getting started because if I have to microwave something to keep it hot, that's gonna be my choice. So that's the first thing I'm building here. Uh, you're probably watching this at the end. I don't know. Uh, but uh, I have no idea how I'm going to edit this. <laughs> I'm just running as fast as I can. That's what we got started. Let's do the rest of this. Let me make a chili burger. I'm going to do the double chili burger. <gasps> what? Yeah, let's do that. So let's make the uh, hamburger part of this. Original Tommy's hamburgers, uh, unless you go for the big ones, are uh, two and a half ounce patties. Yikes, that's small. Uh, that is a very, very small uh, burger by uh, today's standards, 1946 standards. Uh, they were probably bigger and then they made them smaller because I don't think it's smaller. Or maybe that's why people weren't so fat back in the 40s and 50s. Maybe. Maybe we shouldn't be having eight ounce uh, hamburger patties anymore. I don't know. If uh, eight ounce patties are wrong, I don't want to be right. Am I right? Okay. So we're going to do this the Tommy's way. Two and a half it is. So I have a scale because two and a half is really small. It's gonna be hard to judge two and a half. So we're gonna make a little meatball. We're gonna stack up our stuff here and we're gonna see what we get. <clears throat> of course, I can't see it. I don't know if you can, I'm assuming that camera's picking that up. So let's uh, take our meat. This is just an 80-20 ground beef from the grocery store. I have no idea what two and a half is gonna look like. That's 1.2. Thank God. I was afraid 
that was going to be the size of our nope 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 a little more 2.4 i ain't getting gypped that uh, mm -mm. this is pre-cooked um size so after cook look at that 2.5 exactly there you go see i'm a friggin genius no i can read so that is the size of our get off my finger there you go it's stuck on my finger okay this is the size of our uh, meatball that is going to be our uh, hamburger patty do not squish the hell out of this we're gonna take a a piece of uh, parchment paper or wax paper, something like that. Put this over the top and give it a little squish. And we're going to continue until we have all the patties we need to make this. How many patties is that? I don't know. Depends on what I'm doing. I may be doing a bonus video here. <gasps> what do we got? 1.9. Then I'm going to get it done. 2.3. Oh, so close. This is going to take a while. Mm -hmm. 2.4. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm really narrowing it in. 2.4 still. Okay. 2.4 still. Seriously. At some point, it's got to go 2.5, right? 2.4 still. I keep adding stuff to it, and it doesn't change. 2.5? Let's see, I added more and there's still 2.5. I don't know. I think it's how they get you. All right, I'm going to continue making patties here um, for a second. I'm just making the meatballs. I'll show you how we're going to squish these to make the uh, actual burgers in a minute. But uh, why don't I do this alone and you can not have to watch. All right, so I got my four little meatballs here. Again, don't crush them. Don't go crazy. And if the meat's really, really cold, then it uh, stays together better. Um, it, no, I mean, don't mean it, say it stays together better. It stays as meat better. But we have to smash these. So I'm gonna be cooking these in a cast iron skillet because this replicates a flat top pretty well. And we have our meat sitting here. What do we do with this? I'm gonna smash this. That look like uh, not a smashed enough burger. I'm gonna smash that more. Oh, that looks a little better smashed, doesn't it? Yeah, that's how we're gonna do that. All right, so there's one burger done. A burger done. I got a bunch of uh, parchment paper here to do all of these, and probably then some. It's really annoying because it's wanting to fold up on me. Okay. So, I'll give it a squish so it stays in place. And then, if you kind of give this a wiggle, it, it moves it around a little bit better. Is it really, with cold meat, it is rather difficult to get that to squish as flat as you want it to. Remember, it'll shrink back up quite a bit as it cooks. So these have to be much larger than you would think. And that's probably about it. That's perfect. Okay. There you go. So just keep smashing these. I won't make you watch this whole thing because it's painful for me standing here. There, they're all done. We have our four patties here. They're smashed up real nice. They look really good. They're perfect. We're not seasoning these yet. We're going to season these when they go in the pan. But they are nice and thin and ready to go. These stay in the fridge to stay cold because that continues to keep the juices inside. If these are room temperature and when they hit the skillet, they will just go and give everything up and then you get uh, crappy burgers. Don't do that. So keep these in the fridge, keep them really cold until you're ready to cook them. I mean, just like pull them out, throw them in the hot pan, and then uh, we'll go to the next step. All right, let's do that. Rule number one of burgeronomy is always toast your bun. These are dry. There's no butter or anything on them like that. They're just in the pan getting a little toasty crispy. When that's done, you want to throw your patties down. We've already seasoned the first side that went down and put a little more seasoning salt on them. 
let these cook about a minute and a half on each side and that's perfect this pan is smoking hot it is over 500 degrees closer to 600 degrees is the perfect temperature for cooking a burger you will get a beautiful crust on this thing and you're going to need to get underneath it and scrape the burger out because it's it will stick a little bit which is what you want you want to get all of that font off the bottom of the pan cook them about another minute minute and a half and we're done okay we're back and i'm making the uh Tommy's double chili burger. Okay, these went on the grill as I was cooking the uh, chili dogs. Yeah, I cooked the chili dogs on the grill. I ain't apologizing for it either. All right, these are the tiniest little hamburgers I've ever seen because they are authentic to the size. They may have uh, shrunk a bit, but that's uh, shrinkage. It happens, it's a thing. All right, so you put down patty, cheese, patty. It's important how we do things because we're trying to recreate this the way they would have done this. Okay, so now, now get some chili. Oh, hold on to your, hold on to your whatever you're holding on to, folks, because this is about to get messy. Mm-hmm. Okay, onions. So we got our diced up onions here. They're amazing. They're delicious. They're incredible. That's a lot of onion. Okay, pickles. Yeah, dill pickles. You got to use a good quality dill pickle. Uh, Mount Olive is my favorite, if you were asking. Okay, it gets a tomato slice. Yeah, that's a little weird, but it's getting a tomato slice. I don't care. And this one's going to be my wife since she doesn't really love tomato. There you go. What else does it get? It's mustard. Okay, now I want you to know what I'm doing for you people. Okay, this is the closest... I have ever been to a bottle of mustard in my entire life. It's not true, but it sounds good. It's funny. I hate mustard. Mm -mm. Wouldn't need it if you paid me. Oh my God. Okay. Some nice yellow mustard. Boom. And there we go. <laughs> that is the Tommy's chili, double chili burger right there. The mustard. The, the tomato, the pickles, the onion, the chili, the patties, the, the cheese, everything is perfect. That is exactly it. You put that with your side of the cheese fries. It's like Tommy knows what they're doing. They do. Because that right there is an epic meal of epic proportions. And I'm going to have to dig into that sucker now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna make another one of these, but I'm not putting mustard on it. That one's gonna be mine. But that right there is your uh, Tommy's double chili cheeseburger and the fries. Let's make the dog real quick, cause come on. Making a chili dog uh, essentially boils down to the two key ingredients, chili and the dog. Chili we've taken care of. The dog is what we're gonna to have to worry about now. Tommy's is famous for their 100% all beef dogs. That's a really good quality dog. For a fast food restaurant, it really is fantastic. Tommy's is known for quality and the hot dog is no exception. We're gonna step that up just a smidge because this, I've tried every hot dog in the world. Not true, but I've tried a lot of hot dogs, all the name brand stuff, everything there is. This is my favorite. The Ballpark Prime All Beef Dogs, that's a good, solid dog right there. Um, you only get four in a package because they're kind of spendy. But if <laughs> I only eat like two hot dogs a year, and so if I'm doing that, I'm eating one of these. This is what we're going to use. It's a little better than theirs, but uh, close enough. And uh, it's just between you and me. We won't tell anybody. How's that? Okay, cool. Uh, how are we going to cook it? I personally am going to throw this on the grill because that's the best way to cook a hot dog. And if we're cooking hot dogs, I want the best. So I'm using the best hot dog. I'm going to cook it the best way. If you don't have a grill, how are you going to cook a hot dog? You can always microwave it. Don't do that. Microwave hot dogs are an abomination. If it's not 2 o'clock in the morning and you're not bombed out of your mind going, hey, you a hot dog right there. Don't don't microwave it. If, you, if you're that wasted and eating a hot dog, you're not going to remember eating the hot dog anyway. You're just going to wake up with heartburn and wonder why. Um, any other time, please don't microwave a hot dog. That, that is where hot dogs go to die. Don't do that. Okay, so the old school way of cooking a hot dog is boiling it. Not 
not my favorite method for cooking a hot dog. Uh, if you boil it and then put it in the frying pan and then cook it up and, and, and you know that whole thing get the skin crispy, that's a pretty solid way to cook a hot dog. We're going to be cooking uh, burgers and other things anyway, so I could do that. But, again, I have a grill. It's like 30 feet from me. I'm going to go use that. Uh, I'm assuming you don't, or maybe you don't. You can always bake a hot dog, like 400 degrees, seven minutes, something like that. These things cook up beautiful in an oven. Seriously. It's crazy. Most people don't think of that. If you want to get the little char on the whole thing, you can throw it under the broiler for a, for a little bit and get that uh, nice and cooked. Just don't walk away too far because you can burn the crap out of one of these things and that's not really tasty. And yeah, we're going for tasty. So uh, that's a couple of ideas on how to cook a hot dog. Um, now I'm going to go cook this and assemble some hot dogs because I've been talking about hot dogs for a while and chili and my stomach's kind of getting hungry. So uh, no more tucky. Get back to worky. All right, let's go. Okay, I grilled the dog, the the, uh, the buns, because of course you grill the buns. Come on. Let me grab the uh, hot dogs. I have them in the oven. It's only on warm, just keeping them warm while I'm trying to do all this. Okay, that is hotsy totsy. Okay, I'm back with the dogs now. Okay, now we are going to put their dog down. Yep, no, I'm... I'm not, don't say that too loud around here. Cause uh, my dogs, they're a little older. They're, they're a little sensitive. Um, <laughs> we don't say put the dog down around here lately. Mm -mm. All right, mustard again, because you gotta have mustard on this. Sure, why not? Ooh, I'm really glad my wife's gonna be eating that one because, oh my God, that's disgusting. All right. Cheese goes down, and now we chili this up real good. We're gonna chili the hell out of it. I'm gonna have to get this in some sort of a vessel. The chili is going to melt the cheese down here. The dog is hot, all of it's gonna melt in beautifully. That is incredible. Now you will not believe, I'm gonna use the tongs to hold this in place for me because I'm cheating and then it's not gonna work. Oh well, it's worth a shot. If you've never had a Tommy's Chili Dog, what you're about to see here, it's gonna be weird. More onions, because they love their onions. Okay, swear to God, not a joke. This is actually happening, people. Yes, pickles and, oh yeah, take a, uh, Slice of tomato here, because, yeah, that happened. There you go. That, this is the Tommy's Chili Dog. Oh, yeah, it's beautiful. It's a thing of beauty. It's hot. It's delicious. And I'm not going to touch it because it's covered in mustard. And I don't eat mustard. Nope. So, uh, that is it. You have seen this. This is the, the beauty of all of this stuff. I wish I could dig into it and eat it, but I can't. Uh, so you're going to have to for me. And I thank you for watching because this is, this is one of my favorites here. I love chili. I love chili dogs. I love chili cheese fries. I love chili burgers. I love all of it. And I love to, Tommy's is amazing. So if you've never had this, go out and make it. If you live near a Tommy's, if you're lucky enough, I happen to live near a Tommy's and there's a picture I think I put up earlier. I don't know. Or maybe uh, I put it up later. Who knows? But uh, yeah, if you were close to one, you know how great this is. You know how that line wraps around the building. So uh, be patient and uh, enjoy your food. And I thank you for watching. And uh, I will see you in the next video. Hopefully something a little less epic. Because, wow. Okay, let's go, folks. See you later. And uh, thanks for watching. Bye.